Pinkerton's Ghosts is a horror anthology podcast by Superversive Radio, with no affiliation with any detective agency, person, real or imagined, or the dark forces of Outre Terre. It is not intended for children. Morrow reporting in. It was not long before our next encounter. The trail of whatever cult the bedsheet covered man was a part of turned up nothing. They had not left any driver's licenses or much identifiable material. The tables held piles of drugs, idols, and more drugs. Jack and I were sorry that none of them had crashed their cars in the escape. The bedsheet man had burned to a crisp. Nothing identifiable survived him, except that he was a man, once. The man who shrugged off several neck stabs had nothing on him worth mentioning. What was there, we dumped in a drop box. We couldn't sleep, so we took our things from our rooms and left. A diner, a rented boat. The hours ran slow, but ended quickly. We searched the riverways in deliberate fashion. We visited every abandoned boat, every little island. Our tempers were not holding up. Both of us had more than a few moments of naked anger at the other. I am ashamed to say this, but I cannot handle Jack. We missed Orion and Tom. I never had enough time with my father, and I would rather be damned than Jack know his own. It does not do wonders for the mind. Jack comes into his strengths in leaps and bounds. We caught sight of a bone under a tree, and Jack lifted the branch enough for me to check the body. It was too old. The tree had to be a couple of hundred pounds, but Jack's deadlift comes stronger daily. He gnaws jerky as we rest. Even his youth has limits. I talk to him about self-control. It does not take. I am not a good role model. God help me. The next island was large enough that we had to split up. We were never farther than shouting distance. Sometimes I could see him in the gaps of the trees. The insects in this bayou grew thick. We were fortunate it was winter. The swarms might have been so thick that we could see nothing. Our raincoats and trench coats did their work. Only our exposed skin struggled against the hordes. Our insect repellent did nothing. I could not tell you when I noticed the swarms getting thicker. I must have heard it. The buzz moved from a low hum underneath my breath to fighting with my thoughts. I shouted for Jack, and flies slammed into my mouth. There were millions around me, millions unaccountable. Flies and flies flew up from the ground into the air. The sound rose with them. I closed my mouth. They slammed into my lips. They crawled at my nose. They bounced off my ears. They never ended, and they wanted to examine every inch of me. I covered my face with my hands and ran. I had to get out of the mass. I ran through the trees flies did not part. I tackled their mass and parted them with my body weight. I risked glances to see my way through the trees and mud pits. I saw patterns in the flies. First, it was the ghost of images. Something like a face seen in the leaves of trees. Then, a true face. The flies gathered together closer and closer. They formed shapes like skulls, rolling over each other into the mass of skulls and out of them in spheres, mixing like planets smashing. A hand grabbed at a tree branch, leaving scratches as it deformed into a thousand flies. Jack needed a warning. I opened my mouth. Fingers grabbed my tongue before I could shout. I spat flies. A female face, painted, tattooed, stared down with strange eyes. Blue bottle flies danced in a furious tarantella at the eyes. They twitched, and the hundred blue black flies leered at me. The face was flat, painted the hundred colors of flies. Rot and blood dripped from the mouth, 
and covered every nook and cranny of the face, from the corners of her eyes to her lips and teeth. The flies buzzed. The words were clear. What mortal flesh do we have here? Give me your blood. Pour out your sins to me. I will eat them and pass them to the earth, and you will be absolved. This will be the will of the sun. The mouth vomited black bile. I pulled out my pistol and fired three shots into the face. Three holes tore through the flies. They reformed as if I had never fired. I took another direction. I leaped over rotting trees and streams. I would outrun the flies, only to hit a wall of the damnable things fifty feet on. They were herding me to some trap. I could not push through the solid curtains. I could imagine them dissolving me, suffocating me with weight and disgust. I would never be clean. I would never be clean. I saw, as the swarm grew and grew behind me, strange ruins within the forest. Stones left on top of stones and carved with angular patterns. Strange daisies rose above the mud and roots, disused and moss-eaten. None of them were taller than I was. None rose above the trees. What had we found? A temple of some unknown pathogen? A secret, forbidden, buried place with no cult? No goals? No dreams? Except for rotting forever? I stumbled over a corpse, covered in the pelt of a jaguar. My eyes saw ghostly arms reach out from the ground and clasp the corpse. Muscles twitched. I ran onward. I saw Jack tumble down the stairs of one of the buildings. A great swarm of flies, like the one I was being chased by, flew past him and struck the flies behind me. The two swarms twisted and turned, forming a tornado of filth and sickness. Jack lay at the base of the temple, confused by the sudden fall. Even as he picked himself up, he caught my eye. We split, guns out, ready to meet whoever passed through the flies. I hid myself behind a steel carved with three skulls flowing out of each other. Jack hid behind a wall. A woman's face formed out of the fly swarm, then a woman's body, and then strange tribal clothing fell into place. I could not tell if the body and clothes were flies. Unlike the previous apparitions, there was no gap in the illusion. I recognized her clothes as Aztec. Strange knotted ropes were bound at her waist, ears, and neck, nothing to make her modest. Her ornamental belt of thorns ran under loops of flesh torn from her sides. Her ears hung low to their uttermost limit. Her upper lip was covered by a red, white nose piercing, which took the shape of a mustache. Her feet were shod with sandals, and her neck with a jade and ruby bib. And her neck with a jade and ruby bib. She was not decent. She stood without a care for her nudity. I did not want this to be Jack's first experience with the image of a woman. Filth covered her. Her mouth spat some black bile, which flowed over her like an apron. Her red-rimmed eyes pulled blood from the corners as she looked for me. Her skin was red olive of the Central American tribal woman, but her hands and feet were black whether stained by filth or worse. I could not tell. I prepared to fire. She pointed at me. Large hands grabbed mine and forced the gun to aim at my feet. A man dressed in a jaguar pelt loomed over me. Even one of his gigantic hands was enough to grab both my wrists. I kicked back. I struck his thigh, but he laughed and pulled me off center so I could not strike him again. I stopped moving. I felt shame. I had forgotten the corpse behind me. My skin prickled. Two hands, black and smelling of every evil thing, touched my head, my cheeks, my eyelids. 
I could not tell you how the fly spoke. Confess your sins to me. I will make you whole again. You may only confess your sins to me once, so make it good. Make it full. Then do not sin again until you die. I can only forgive sins once. Just once. I will eat them. I will pass them to the earth. They will lie there for the beast to step on and fertilize the earth. You poor thing of blood and flesh. Blood covers sin. So confess your sins to me, and we will make the sacrifice. Tekukani, the man-eater, confessed his sins to me. I have bought back his soul for the hour. He rotted in the earth and was brought back. See? He is whole. His being is no mere ghoul. He is pure, sinless. You will be sinless. The fingers stopped on my eyes. She smelled like rotting deer carcass that had been boiled in curdled milk. I kept my mouth closed. I know your history. Why should you believe yourself pure? You abandoned purity for hardship. We searched for you like the rest, but we found your little sins, your shouting, your wrath. I know all. Confess it to me. Your murders are known. Speak them to me. Don't you wish to be pure once more? Her fingers massaged my temples. Her lips were next to my ear. An insect with unending legs skittered over my earlobe. I tried to pull my hands out of the grip of Tekuani. He pulled me around, always keeping my balance off whenever I got my feet together for a strike. He must have been a master of taking prisoners for the bloody Aztec sacrifices. It is no shame to have anger. It is a sin to be wrathful. All you have to do is say, forgive my wrath. I will eat your wrath. I will pass it through my body to the earth where it will rot, and it will be nothing, nothing at all. You will be forgiven. We see your screaming fits with your son. He shouts right back. You drive him to wrath. You are ruining him. I found my tongue. I risk the flies. The Lord rebuke you. The hands flew from my body faster than I thought. Keep her silent. We shall see if her son is as wise as she. I saw the demon walk through the stone blocks. Jack could be seen, picking his way through the mess of rotted architecture towards me. His gun was out, and he was taking care. A pity his enemy was not flesh and blood, but a power of night and darkness. Before I could shout for him, one of the great hands of Tekuani covered my mouth. In a moment, he had forced my body up through his grip on my wrists. Now... He stretched himself to his full height, and he kept me from a good fighting stance by pulling me up, wrists over my head. He kept me close. I fought him with all my strength. He laughed again. Jack heard it. He turned and had his gun aiming at me at speeds that set my heart to flutter. I spoke with my mind, because I cannot speak with my mouth. He would not hear me but I hoped he would remember his training. Good boy, Jack. Now if you fire at the right part of my side, you'll only hit meat and the bullet will pass into Tekanami's gut. We have studied anatomy. I don't need all my earlobe. His eye is just by my left ear. Jack didn't have it in him to fire at his mother. I could be used as a hostage against him. That wasn't good. My attention was pulled away. The demon was on my son. She slapped him across the forehead. Her thumbs were at his eyes, keeping his eyelids open. Her fingers were at his nostrils, his ears, his mouth. Even though she was nowhere near as big and strong as my son, 
She held him captive with her fingertips alone. He was staring right at her body. She forced him to point his eyes at her bare chest and below. His mouth was open, and her pinkies probed his teeth, leaving black streaks. She intoned her siren song. Confess your sins to me. I will eat them. They will pass through me and into the earth. They will rot, no longer a part of you. Your soul, confess and be purified. All mankind is impure. Born impure. All mankind sin. There has been no man on earth who has not fallen to temptation but one. You are not so high and mighty. You have sinned. Jack shook his head. I thought at him again. Don't talk to it. Just pray. Call out for protection from God. He will protect you. Why didn't he remember restraining? The hand of Tekuani was over my mouth. He dodged behind me any time Jack's gun twitched. He needed not have feared. Jack was distracted. I almost wished for the bullet. Almost. You have sinned, Jack Morrow. You have sinned, and you must confess those sins to be purified. I am the purification goddess, Tazoteto. I am the goddess of claiming filth off your body. In bathhouses, I eat sin. I am the little death caused by lust. I am cotton, white as snow. Confess your sins, and I will make you pure, as cotton white as I am. I will give you a holy day to bathe yourself, and to purge yourself of every ounce of waste, and the cleansing will be complete. Even if you die before then, you will still have confessed to me. Jack was shaking. I knew what she smelled like. I knew what he was seeing. Her fingertips left trails, tattooing Jack's face in intricate spirals. We know. I will help you. Do you want to know your sin? I know one. It is in my purview of purity. You were hunting in the woods. You were alone. You knew you were alone. No other human for miles, but one. Jessica Blanche. Jessica Blanche took a moment to click in my mind. We went to church with the family. They were closed off as I am. Jessica would be about the same age as Jack. My mind froze. I trembled. My knees went weak. Jack, not already. Yes, you saw her. You are a lonely boy. You never speak to women if you can help it. They look down on you, and it hurts. But you are a natural man. You want one for yourself, even if you know nothing about them. You saw her in the forest, and you followed her. Like a shadow, you stalked her. You watched her as she picked a flower, or checked one of her family's trails. You saw her go down to a spring. She threw her head back in exultation. Yes! You watched as she stripped and swam. You left when you realized your sin. When your conscience convicted you of lust. You lusted after her. I accuse. I know. Heaven knows. You did not need to touch her. Or watch her longer than the minute you did. Your lust is just as good a sin as fornication for your damnation. Jack grimaced 
and shook his head like a dog killing a snake. His involuntary reaction bit hard and ripped the flesh off of Tazel Toltel's pinky fingers and broke them. The bones stuck out and the tips were at right angles. She got close to him and put her mouth to his ear. I could not hear what she was saying, but I had seen it before. I saw my sisters do such things at parties with the men my mother sent them. The demon inflamed Jack's lust. Maybe she described Jessica. Maybe she layered on accusation after accusation. She smiled. She frowned. Jack shook like a leaf. I went mad. I bit the flesh of Tekuani with everything I had. He grunted. I tore and ate his fleshy hand. Blood dripped down my chin and my teeth gnashed. He danced. He could not release my mouth because I would tell Jack the secret of a demon's accusation. He could not release my wrists because I would kill him. He was trapped. I made it past the flesh of his hands to the tendons. The demon's hands made foul gestures. I gnawed with greater ferocity. Jack's mouth was opening and closing. His eyes no longer saw the body of the demon, but something else, unseen by me. His chin wagged. I snapped something in Tekuani's hand. He screamed and let go of my mouth. Jack, pray! We are already forgiven! Jack's eyes focused on me. Then he got down on his knees and clasped his hands. Taze Toto raged. She shouted. She kicked dirt at him. She could not touch him. She shouted the horrid secrets of his heart. She needled with accusations of how he thought of other women he knew. She wrote out everything that made him angry with me. By the end of it, Jack had no secrets. But he kept praying. I was weeping. I turned. Tekuani was in a fighting stance. His good hand grasped the obsidian chunk sword I had seen in Aztec pictures. I emptied my gun's magazine into his chest and head. He fell as any mortal man. Taze Total appeared close to me. You have won this round because Fickle Heaven protected you. Do not think it will happen again. More lies. Taze Total sneered. Her red-rimmed eyes became less focused. She dissolved into flies. They buzzed around each other, then flew off in every direction, unguided, dispossessed. Jack was still kneeling. I brought him up, and we walked back to our boat. We had had enough for today. I would like to say I was a good, or forgiving, or... I do not know. I would like to say I was not the mother I was. I could not help myself. I rebuked and railed at him, going into spiritual warfare without prayer, like I was so good at praying. I poked and needled at him. He flinched when I brought up Jessica. I saw I had gone too far. I apologized to him. I had just heaped on shame after I told him to pray about his lust. I had tried to eat something I should not have. He's going to carry that weight, unless the Lord wills his healing sooner than is normal. No joy. Jack would not let me near him. We did not lose our stress. By the time we got back to our motel, we were not talking to each other. I went out at night to catch the air, clear my head, turn down the spiritual turmoil. How could I call on the Lord to protect me in one moment and then beat my son with every bit of verbal viciousness I had? I regretted everything. I felt the prick of a needle at my neck. I fumbled at my gun, but my fingers had no strength. I fell outside my door. I only hope Jack heard my body fall. I knew nothing more for a time. Morrow out.
Pinkerton's Ghosts is a podcast distributed by Superversive Radio, a license under an attribution non-commercial share-alike international license. This episode was written by Ben Wheeler and performed by Selena Saucedo. Ben Wheeler edits, directs, produces, and herds cats. Kim Dickerson performs our audio editing. Visit us on Facebook, read articles on superversivesf.com, or listen to us on unauthorized Acast, iTunes, or Spotify. Contact us through Twitter at Pinkerton's Ghosts, email us at Pinkerton's Ghosts at gmail.com, or send us noble messenger possums with messages strapped to their backs. Don't worry. They know how to find us. Thank you for listening. And good luck.